Okay, welcome back to EENG 460 and uh, today we're going to look at uh, some um, branch not equal command. Yeah, some branching commands. Uh, you know, you'll typically want to write loops, but if you try to write a loop like you would write a for loop in C, it could be a little messy. You know, you, there's kind of a trick in terms of writing loops in assembly. You typically want to kind of use the opposite condition and compare things to zero. You know, like in C, you might want to loop to 10 and compare it to 10, but in assembly, you'd want to count down from 10 and then compare the trigger to zero when you uh, exit out. All right, so let me bring in the file we're going to talk about today. And this guy is called uh, branch.s. Um, and just a demo um, demonstration of branching using the BNE command, branch not equal. Uh, let's see, I've got my comments, I've got my data, I'm not sure if I'm even using that. And then uh, I've got my main routine right here. Well, the first block of interest is this code here, okay? Now, there's some new things here. There's this zero guy, dollar zero. What's that about, dollar zero? Well, there's actually a register called the zero register. If you go over here to your integer registers, you know, you've got your, you know, you got your V0, V1s, and you got your temporaries, and you got your S registers. Well, this guy right here is called the uh, zero register. And the reason it's called the zero register is because it's always zero. You can't change the value. So you've always got access to zero in terms of comparing things to, all right? So this guy can also be referenced by using the word dollar zero, all right? Dollar zero for the zero register. So let's look at this code here. The first thing we do is we load immediate T05. So we put five in the T0 register. Then we use an add immediate command to subtract one from T0 and store the result back into T0. So we're just decrementing. Now here, this guy would be the body of your loop. Let's actually uh, you know, put something here, pound sign, body of loop. You know, whatever the loop was doing. I just put some no ops in there because uh, you know I didn't want to cloud the uh, demo with other stuff. So whatever your loop is doing, you put it inside there. Then when you come down to here, you take a look at T0. Well, T0 started off at 5, now it's 4. What I can do is I can say branch not equal to L1. Okay, well, there's L1 right there. So if T0, which currently is 4, is not equal to 0, that guy's always going to be 0, then we're going to loop back up to here. Well, we loop back up to here, T0 is 4, I subtract 1, T0 now becomes 3. I do my loop, and then I compare 3 to 0. Are they not equal? No, they're not equal. Loop back up here to L1. So now I decrement 3 down to 2, and then I do my body of my loop. I compare 2 to 0, not equal. I jump back up to L1. Uh, now I decrement it from 2 down to 1. Do the body of my loop. I compare 1 to 0. Are they equal? No, they're not. I branch back up to L1. Now I decrement from 1 down to 0, do the body of my loop. Is T0 equal to 0? Yes, it is. So I don't do the branch not equal, and then I move down here. So this loop up here basically loops five times. Change the value of this counter, and you loop more times. And you're comparing it to 0. All right. Now, if you want to write it like a C program, you can come down to here and say, well, here's my index. You know, it's kind of like I equal to 0. And I want it to go five times. I'll put that in the T1 register. So T0 is 0, T1 is 5. Every time through the loop, I'm going to increment T0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You know, up here I was decrementing it. Down here I'm going to be incrementing. And I want to bail out of my loop when T0 equals T1. Okay. So let's put the uh, same thing. Body of loop right here, whatever the loop is doing. Okay. And then what you do is down here, you say, well, as long as T0, which initially is 0, is not equal to 5, then I'm going to jump up to loop 2, uh, L2 label, which is right here. And then I increment that guy from 0 to 1, and then I compare 1 to uh, 5, and I keep branching because they're not equal. Bump it up to 2, then 3, then 4, and then 5, and then finally that T0 will equal T1, and we'll... Uh, we won't take the branch because they are equal, and then we'll pop out. So both of these loops do it uh, five times. You know, this might make more sense to you if you think about it from a C perspective, but in reality, this is probably more efficient, okay? Brand, always uh, counting down to zero and then using that zero register as, a com register as a comparison. Well, let's go ahead and run this and see if they um, loop five times. File. Reinitialize. Uh, let's see, this is the branch program. And here we go. All right, so let's uh, F10 through this guy. And let's see, okay. Um, click in here. 
Okay, we just set up uh, T0 with 5. Now I'm going to decrement T0 so it should be 4. Okay, I've got some no-ops. And uh, let's go double check that T0 is in fact 4. Yep, T0 is 4. Okay. So at this point, I am right here, and I'm going to compare T0, which is 4, to 0. They're not equal, so I'm going to take the loop back to L1. Now, see, notice over here, you don't really see where L1 is, but you notice I did a little trick. I put a comment in my assembly so I know where L1 is, so I know I'm going to branch up to L1. Let's go back and look at the assembly. Yeah, see how I put these guys right here? I put those comments in there, which tells me where L1, and this comment here, which tells me where L2 is. Kind of a little trick so I can look at the code in SPIM and say, okay, I'm going to jump up to L1. Well, if I press F10, yep, there I did. I jumped up to L1. T0 was 4. Now it should be 3. Let's go check it. Yep, T0 is 3 now. So now you step through here, no op, no op, and then again, you're going to compare 3 to 0. All right, well... No, they're not equal, so we should take the branch. Yep. Now we're going to decrement it from 3 to 2. Compare 2 to 0. No. Take the branch. Decrement down to 1. Compare 1 to 0. No. Take the branch. Now it's from 1 to 0, so T0 is 0 now, so I'm going to compare it to 0. Uh, they are equal. This is a branch not equal, B and E, so I'm not going to take the branch, and I'm going to go to my next uh, for loop. So here I load uh, in this next for loop. Uh, T0 is my index, and T1 is how far I want to go. I load immediate T0, 0, load immediate T5, T1, 5, and then I increment my index T0. So T1 should be 5 and T0 should be 1. Okay, T0 is 1, T1 is, is 5. And now I kind of go through my loop, my no ops, body of the loop. And here I say branch not equal. So in the above case, I was comparing branch not equal of a register to the 0 register. Here I'm actually comparing two registers. T0 is my index. It's going to go from 0 to 5. T1 is 5. How far am I going to go? Currently, T0 is equal to 1. Is 1 equal to 5? No, it's not. Branch not equal to L2. Notice I did the same thing. I put that L2 comment in my .s file, and it branches up to L2. Okay, now T0 is equal to 2. Is, reg is 2 not equal to 5? No, it's not. Jump to L2. Okay, now it's equal to 3. Is 3 not equal to 5? No, it's not. Jump to L2. Okay, now it's 4. Is 4 not equal to 5? Um, no, it's not. Jump to L2. Okay. So now at this point, let's check T0 and T1, and they're equal. Yeah, Because we've uh, started off with T0 equal to 0, and we've incremented it by 1 using uh, this guy right here. And now they're going to be equal. So when I come down to here and I do this branch not equal, well, let's go back and double check. T0, T1 are equal. All right, so now the branch is not going to execute. I'm not going to go up to L2, and I'm going to pop out of the program, print, and terminate. All right, and there you go. So in this program right here, fairly straightforward, um, we added a new command, branch not equal. Compares two registers, and it jumps to a label. And then you can use the zero register, or you can actually use an explicit register that you set up. About the same syntax. Now, now you're kind of starting to see why, you know, we put the beginning of main right here. That's a label that says this is where main starts. This is a label that's actually used in main. And this is the label that's actually used in main. And as things get more complicated, each of our subroutines will have a label that identifies the begin, beginning of that procedure. Plus, they'll also have a bunch of labels inside that for intermediate jumps. All right. Uh, I think that's a good place to stop. And um, we'll see you next time.